Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasha Vedic. This month, August, uh, on 14th of August 2022, Chris Hedges on his blog, his internet blog, posted an interesting article entitled, We are not the first civilization to collapse, but we will probably be the last. And he says, I look out from the structure known as Monk's Mound at the flatlands below with smaller mounds dotting the distance. These eastern earthen mounds built at a confluence of the Illinois, Mississippi and Missouri rivers are all that remain of one of the largest pre-Columbian settlements north of Mexico occupied from around 800 to 1400 AD by perhaps as many as 20,000 people. This great city, perhaps the greatest in North America, rose, flourished, fell into decline, and was ultimately abundant. Civilizations die in familiar patterns. They exhaust natural resources. They spawn parasitic elites who plunder and loot the institutions and systems that make a complex society possible. They engage in futile and self-defeating wars. And then the rot sets in. The great urban centers die first, falling into irreversible decay. Central authority unravels. Artistic expression and intellectual inquiry are replaced by a new dark age, the triumph of tawdry spectacle and the celebration of crowd-pleasing imbecility. Collapse occurs and can only occur in a power vacuum. Anthropologist Joseph Tainter writes in The Collapse of Complex Societies, Collapse is possible only where there is no competitor strong enough to fill the political vacuum of disintegration. Just as in the past, countries that are environmentally stressed, overpopulated, or both, become at risk of getting politically stressed and of their governments collapsing. Jared Diamond argues in Collapse how societies choose to fail or succeed. He also says when people are desperate, undernourished and without hope. They blame their governments, which they see as responsible for or unable to solve their problems. They try to emigrate at any cost. They fight each other over land. They kill each other. They start civil wars. They figure that they have nothing to lose, so they become terrorists or they support or tolerate terrorism. End of the quote. The more insurmountable the crisis becomes, the more we, like our prehistoric ancestors, will retreat into self-defeating responses, violence, magical thinking and denial, writes Chris Hedges. Well, indeed, there will be many denials, but the United States of America will fall like ancient civilizations, dear friends. There are also similarities to ancient Rome. We can find many similarities between modern America and ancient Rome. Well, here's a question, are we Rome? The question has weighed heavily on the minds of American conservatives, libertarians and Catholics at their various conferences. Is America headed the way of the Roman Empire? Bureaucratic decay, massive public debt, an overstretched military, a political system seemingly incapable of responding to challenges. The late Roman Empire suffered these maladies and so some fear does contemporary America. Noted at one point the American Conservative Journal which has been pursuing this line diligently and with a growing constituency over a number of years. Well, there was a warning in that article of the American Conservative. If libertarians on the right worry about structural collapse, cultural and religious conservatives add a moral and spiritual dimension to the debate. Rising hedonism, waning religious observance, ongoing breakup of the family, and a general loss of cultural coherence to traditionalists, these are signs of a possible dark age ahead. And, of course, we have various other parallels that we can draw between modern America and the ancient Rome. However, let's just try to comment and give you some insight into that. And what does the Bible have to do with all of that? Well, brethren and friends, the United States is a house divided and it will fall, even worse than ancient Rome did. The United Kingdom has Brexit and other troubles. 
Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are having issues as well. As far as some attitudes in modern society, notice also something earlier from the, the following by Charles Hugh Smith. He wrote an article saying, are we, uh, entitled, are we fiddling while Rome burns? In which he says, solutions abound, but they require the retirement of obsolete systems that defend entrenched interests and soul-crushing inequalities. It turns out Nero was zoom fiddling as Rome burned. He was 60 kilometers away at a time. The story has become shorthand for making light of a catastrophe, either out of self-interest, one theory had Nero clearing a site he desired for a palace with a fire, or out of a mad detachment from reality. Are we fiddling while Rome burns? I would say yes, because we are not solving any of the structural problems that are dooming the status quo, status quo. And uh, here is a short list of structural problems we should be tackling, says this author. Soaring inequality and the institutionalization of economic privilege. The central state government has one default setting, endless expansion into every nook and cranny of daily life. Finance has detached from the real world economy, distorting every function via financialization, which concentrates concentrates income and wealth in the hands of the few. The fourth thing to be tackled is our educational system is obsolete, but the current system is incapable of transformation for structural reasons. And the fifth one, the economy and thus our society, uh, in effect our mode of production, are changing beneath our feet in dramatic ways. Denial won't fix what's broken, and neither will magical thinking... The economy is recovering, supposedly symbolic gestures and virtue, virtue signaling will fix everything, etc. Clinging to the absurd hope that the status quo just has a nagging cold will only increase the disorder when the system breaks down. Friends, while there are structural problems in the United States, it is the cause that needs to be dealt with. This is something that Charles Hugh Smith did not truly address. Decades ago, the old Worldwide Church of God put out an article about similarities between ancient Rome and the United States and the United Kingdom. And it says, the five major causes for the collapse of the Roman Empire are rife in modern American Britain. Tragically, modern man has not learned from historical mistakes. Millions today believe America is too big, too powerful, and too wealthy to suffer a similar fate. But the cold facts present... They present a bleak warning, a warning we simply must not ignore. To Roman citizens living in the glitter of empire, enjoying an explosive frenzy of building with huge cities bejeweled with rising marble columns with paved pleasant tree-lined avenues and rushing fountains, seeing the victory parades, all the triumphal arches of yet additional conquests, hearing of the exploits of this or that great general, Rome was impregnable. She was the world, and the world was Rome. Well, doesn't all this resemble our modern UK and America? Oh, yes, indeed. And then the article, of course, uh, elaborates on other parallels between the modern United Kingdom and the United States of America. Well, one of the parallels that the article points out is national debt. National debt, indeed, and... Uh, Will our nation also fall, is the question. Well, the total official debt of the United States government is over 30 trillion U.S. dollars now. This massive debt cannot continue indefinitely, and as we are seeing interest rates rise, this will further stress the United States finances until it is too late. Uh, We can see this scenario laid out in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 6, 7, and 8. Friends, have no doubt that a debt is a consequence of sin, and it is a curse. This is what the Bible says in Deuteronomy, I'm reading now from sections from Deuteronomy, chapter 28, section 42 to 45, and section 47 to 52. Deuteronomy 28, and we are reading... Now verse 43, 
the alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall land to you, but you shall not land to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst, in nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. A nation whose language you will not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which does not respect the elderly, nor show favor to the young. And they shall eat the increase of your livestock and the produce of your land until you are destroyed. They shall not leave your grain or new wine or oil or the increase of your cattle or, or the offspring of your flocks until they have destroyed you. They shall besiege you at all your gates until your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land. And they shall besiege you at all your gates throughout all your land which the Lord your God has given you. So, this is a stern warning indeed in the word of God. Now, increased acceptance and participation of sin and greed is the real structural cause of what will lead to the end of the United States of America. Abortion, pornography, sexual immorality, a disdain for scripture, etc. are major problems that are leading to bad political and other decisions. This will not end well for the USA and its Anglo-Saxon descended allies. We read that it will be horrible in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, in Daniel chapter 8 verse 24 and 25, and in Daniel 11 verse 39. So, we are to repent of our sins. That's the only hope for this dying humanity. And whether or not you believe in the Bible, the reality is that the Great Tribulation is coming, Matthew twenty four twenty one, the words of Jesus Christ. And the USA will be greatly troubled by it, as it says in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, to the point it will be conquered and its land divided. This is quote from Daniel 11, verse 39. While national repentance could delay that, such repentance is not expected, as we read in Hosea chapter 11. Though you personally can repent, as it says in Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And as it turns out, Jesus does offer a way out prior to the establishment of the kingdom of God for certain Christians. And this is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I'll make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I'll make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I'll write on him my name, the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I'll write on him my new name. So to overcome includes, dear friends, changing yourself. Philadelphia means love of the brethren. Philadelphians need to do more than worry about themselves. They need to follow the lead of Jesus to support going through the open door of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God to the world as a witness, as we read in Matthew 24, 14. That's the instruction by Jesus Christ. And have no doubts that it is only the Philadelphian Christians that Jesus makes that promise of protection to. Other Christians at the end will face Satan's wrath as we can read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Until next time, keep in mind and strive to be Philadelphian Christians. Until next time, goodbye friends.